Okay, so let me start and people will be joining. So I think our next workshop is Do's and Don'ts for Women Venture Capitalist with Victoria Tigipka, Managing Partner of TA Ventures. And we'll be focused around the success of women in investment management and differences between men and women in investing style. And I think preparing for this forum, I read some interesting research where I said that women in investment management in a st study done by Warwick University, they generally outperform men by 2% per year, which you look at the compounding, it's really, it's really big difference. And I think this topic will be moderated by Raman Bonder, and I'll pass the stage to Raman Bonder, managing partner of Odrik Bergson, who will then... Okay, thank you a lot. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for you, for, for all of you being here in this audience. We'll try to make this discussion uh, really interesting, uh, inter interesting, and thank, th thanks to uh, Victoria for uh, being with us also. So, uh, Victoria, I think that uh, everybody knows her. She is one of the most remarkable and exceptional uh, female leader in Ukrainian, especially VC world, and definitely, uh, I think, 10 years you are leading almost 10 years you're leading uh, TA Ventures, uh, which mostly focused on early stage investments in uh, mobility and uh, digital health. And today we are going to talk uh, regarding uh, vision and role of the woman in VC, but not only. I want to discuss with you uh, women leadership in general. And uh, let me start from uh, quite an interesting question uh, for me. Uh, being a woman, how it helped you to be successful in this uh, man's world? Yeah, thank you. So just I want to quickly present who am I uh, um, for everybody. So my name is Victoria Tijipko. I am running the venture capital fund, TIA Ventures. We started in 2010. Currently, we have uh, made 136 investments um, in Europe and uh, US and Ukraine, obviously, and uh, reached 46 exits. Uh, uh, we are like in top 5% of best performing VCs globally, uh, which is good and great. And this successful story uh, out of Ukraine is really uh, remarkable. And we're happy that we have amazing team, which made it happen. Uh, investing in different verticals, uh, mobility, automotive mobility, it's our last uh, trend. Uh, digital health, um, back with the AI and other interesting tech stack on the back of these both uh, verticals. A part of this, we are not limited to, the, to these two verticals. Uh, doing a lot in uh, B2B marketplaces, um, in uh, MarTech, in PropTech, in HR tech, and many, many other verticals which we started to explore back in 2010. So speaking about women uh, in leadership and help, how did it help me uh, to be well? Or not, or, or not, not. Let's, yeah. let's, let's find out. It, yes, I would put it differently. So I'm lucky to not, uh, not to be injured by these uh, uh, problems, yeah, which we are discussing currently, or this women, women in business, women in leadership, inclusivity, uh, gender inclusivity, etc. But I mean, um, I would say that um, I mean, there is not, there is nothing uh, about a women, men world. This is about professionalism. So if you are professional in your um, industry, so you have uh, the same chances to um, uh, to be accepted, uh, to be uh, viewed by others, uh, to be considered as a specialist, as a professional. So that's important. On another side, there are of course uh, traditional uh, industries um, where it's a man's world, and venture capital is not an exclusion. Um, in venture capital, currently, we have only 8% of women, uh, which is a dangerous figure, <laughs> but the situation is changing. Uh, the idea is to have like 50% uh, women in venture capital, and it would help definitely to support more female founders. And another issue is that uh, there is not, there are no many, not many female founders so far. Uh, the, um, uh, statistically, it's 15% female founders. Um, of course, they are getting less financing because uh, it's only 15%. Uh, so, uh, the more female founders, uh, the more money will come into female um, uh, female startups. But um, sad news are that, uh, unfortunately, again, according to the statistics, uh, the female founders currently getting 
50 to 8 percent less uh, valuation for their companies, for their startups, comparing to the male-led uh, startups, which is a damaging uh, statistics, and uh, nobody likes it, of course. So, but uh, this is the way we should change that ourselves. I'm speaking about women, and uh, there are a lot of uh, there is still a lot to be done. But um, there are a lot of supporting stats that there are a, lot, a lot of things are going, uh, going already. Uh, a lot of things changed. So for example, um, if we uh, take like 10 step back 10 years ago, uh, in, in American colleges, uh, there were only 10% of females. Mm. Now, 2017 stats, 50%. So uh, Ivy League, uh, for example, Ivy League. So now it's almost 50% females graduate from Ivy League with owners, et cetera, et cetera. Generally, about 50%, 46, 50, depending on the uh, Ivy League um, college. So we are there. I mean, oh, we are almost there. So uh, 50%. <laughs> there is nothing to discuss. The question is uh, what we do with this, um, with this 50%, mm -hmm. currently, how we use our potential and uh, how to explain uh, to the world that uh, having Having female founders, having female uh, in management does change the um, economics of the enterprise dramatically. So I have a lot of interesting stats. I'm happy to share them. So how uh, including how, how including female founders. But why we have up? such kind of statistics that uh, female founders uh, number of female founders such. Uh, Yes, I understand. So, low level. Why, why is 15 percent? Yeah, because I mean, uh, that's about education. Uh, that's about taking challenges and risks. And uh, nowadays, I think another five, ten years, the decision will change dramatically. For example, recently I was speaking in a big um, a female conference, more than 3,000 females from East, um, uh, Middle East. And you will be surprised that the 50% of the uh, startups started uh, in this region in last three years were founded by uh, females in Middle East. Yeah, but another thing for us to understand that 80% of the population in the Middle East, it's uh, Indian, right? So the, the majority of those startups were run by not, not, not originally born, uh, Middle East uh, women, uh, but by Indians, immigrants, um, which came to Middle East to work. That's like this, but still, I mean, the stats is amazing. So I don't see any problem in Ukraine to uh, leverage the stats and to have 50% of the female founders in Ukraine. So why is that? So uh, because uh, all of us, I mean, mothers and fathers, should uh, actually start with educating their startups, I mean, their kids, because our best startups are kids, uh, from the very beginning and start um, in investing into, first of all, in their uh, daughters uh, from the early age, because this change in the mentality, is, it happens from six years old. So there are a lot of interesting service and research on that. So before six years, they position um, uh, girls and boys position themselves equal, but something happens from six, six and um, onwards. So uh, they started to be more shy, etc., etc. So that's um, wh where the problem is. So we have to change this, we have to um, treat them equally, so they have to play uh, equal games. It's not that uh, dolls are for, uh, for girls and uh, cars and the computers are for boys. So that's the major problem, etc. So, um, so we have to be more um, attentive how we uh, develop our kids <laughs> um, and uh, the new generation will... But have you noticed any kind of difference in efficiency between CEO male and, and female CEOs uh, or, or founders of t startups? Because there are a number of research that uh, women have a different uh, way of thinking, different way of uh, emotional uh, reactions, different way of even decision making. Decision making more slow, women need more time to make decision, but uh, definitely this decision balance, is it enough? Uh, if you can share this uh, research, uh, I would like to see it because I have totally different research. So if you come back to the best, uh, very popular research in, um, 
since 2003, I can share it. So there were a lot of interesting um, comparisons on the investment tactics, strategies, investment knowledge, I would say, uh, women uh, and uh, men. And the result was that the investment uh, capabilities, strategies, knowledge of both are equal. So rather no difference. I would say that to my mind, of course, I mean, the women are better. <laughs> yeah, because they have the sixth sense, a sixth sense, and it does help me a lot. Um, especially in the um, uh, risk of uh, venture capital, investment, et cetera, et cetera. And having, um, I mean, there are other, a lot, I mean, bunch of different research on this. Mm -hmm. So just um, some examples. In uh, 25, top, in 25, uh, top, uh, in Fortune 500, if you take the top 25% of Fortune 500 companies in tech, uh, the women, um, if they have, uh, two, three women in management, uh, in top management, the companies perform much better comparing to the uh, male-led companies. So speaking, um, speaking of, um, with the figures, is 34% difference in terms of revenues. Mm -hmm. There are another interesting research also on um, companies in the Forbes 100, um, uh, in tech companies, etc. So by um, um, uh, revenues, uh, capital investment, uh, return on equity, uh, 34, 42, and 66 uh, percent mm -hmm. higher when you have uh, female uh, in the top management, and the same with the startups. But I mean, the same stats. For that's one in dollar that's invested, interesting. That is interesting. And have that's you, about have it. You I mean, you have to hire women because it's about uh, better economics. So one dollar invested in the tech startups, um, you take the, 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 the top uh, tech startups um, in our industry. One dollar invested with one female founder where at least one female founder brings you 34 uh, percent, uh, 34 cents per dollar invested, uh, sorry, um, 78 uh, cents per dollar invested comparing to 34 with the male only led um, tech companies. So you founders. mean gender b b balanced uh, so you, teams? So you get two times, two times more economics uh, when you have at least one female founder in a tech startups. So I mean all these stats are open so you can get all those. And um, definitely, uh, there is a lot of supporting economics um, uh, that it's not just for PT or we have to make this gender balance, etc. It's uh, about economics. So you're having women, you balance uh, the company, you have better economics, you have the people who, which are um, have a different um, risk strategies, and uh, female are like this. So it's it's about so just you pure you encourage uh, founders to hire more women because th they may increase uh, of course, financial economics. performance. Financial performance, hundred percent. 100%, and there are a lot of stats on this. So uh, this is one thing. And then uh, generally the landscape of female entrepreneurship is changing, yeah? because 10 years from back, uh, we had like uh, only in US, um, less than five million uh, female entrepreneurs. Now, 10, 10 years uh, from 10 years back, it's more than 10 million uh, female entrepreneurs. So what they do, I mean, they learn entrepreneurship, they learn, uh, they get online courses on business, on marketing, on how to do business, etc. And then that transfers into the um, increasing quality and quantity of their companies and ventures. So 2x more uh, ventures uh, comparing to 10 years But what back. about Ukraine? In Ukraine... What kind of statistics do we have? Uh, unfortunately, Ukraine doesn't have statistics, <laughs> which is uh, open to us, but what I can um, see from the startups which we are seeing, I would say the, the quantity of the female founders and the female-led startups is increasing year to year. It's increasing. So, for example, in our portfolio, it's more than 20% uh, of um, companies where you have uh, either um, only female-led uh, companies or there is at least one uh, female founder uh, in startups. And I mean, uh, the question is about uh, how do we delegate, how do we, women, I mean, how do we delegate uh, everything to men, mm -hmm. uh, also at home, also taking uh, care of kids. In our startups, for example, it's like not normal pra practice now that the males go uh, and stay with kids 50% of the time. So the females, they start, the women start, and then uh, it's 50% balance and it's normal. 
And it doesn't mean that they stop working, so they can do uh, on remote. And the same like women, they can do on remote. For example, in our company, we have more than 50% in our com companies, a number of different projects, ST Ventures, it's uh, Code Club, it's VTech organization for the women in technology, uh, which started quite recently uh, in uh, the Film Festival. Oh, by the way, in, uh, then also in uh, Film Academy, with the 34% of the female academics uh, in the, in the um, um, in the um, Film Academy of Ukraine comparing to 10, 12 in uh, Oscar <laughs> Academy. So we are much ahead of others also in, uh, from, in, in culture and uh, cinema. So um, f females, they work from home. So there is uh, no longer um, a problem. So when you deliver a baby, you have to stay home. There is not a problem. So half a year up to one year, now that's fine with us. I mean, they do work. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, there is no even resize, so they do everything which, what is needed on remote. So that that's not a problem in majority of cases. Uh, there are of course some offline businesses where the women should be present, but for us it's not a problem at all. You have launched the uh, W Tech initiative, as I understand. That's the club for the female C level executive from tech companies. What is the purpose? Why you did this? Um, thank you for your question. So it's uh, quite obvious. So this is VTech, uh, Women in Tech community. It's not a club. It's a community community where it's more than 700 females, female um, leaders, female in uh, tech business, female which are working in the uh, big uh, big tech companies, also in startups. And uh, the idea is that the uh, crowd wisdom should help uh, solve a lot of questions and uh, issues um, uh, for us women. So it's not, a not, not, not that difficult to address the question to the crowd uh, with the 700 plus members mm -hmm. and get the questions. So what we see now is really vibrant and working community. We meet every month, uh, every first Thursday of, uh, of the month. Uh, it's for 500 plus uh, members um, every every month, and there is a speaker as we present every month two projects from the female community, mostly startups. Uh, then we present uh, ambassadors, which should develop a VTech community, uh, not only in Ukraine but in Ukraine also worldwide. So we have a number of we have already two reps uh, in other countries, and we opened two VTech communities in Odessa and Dnipropetrovsk. And the goal is to cover the whole Ukraine in two years. But to what have 10, strategic, people what, what, what strategic goal do you have? I mean, what you to want support, to, to support to support women in IT uh, entrepreneurship, so uh, they can solve their issue, they can raise money. Money, they can present their project, mm -hmm. they can get grants to go to present their companies in different like uh, renowned world uh, conferences on IT. They can have enough money to present uh, their businesses with a special booth. We can connect them with the potential um, fun uh, funds which can invest in the companies and we can develop the international network because having partnered already with Elevate clubs and they have the community of 44 clubs worldwide with the female in business uh, female um, clubs for women in business, uh, basically the women in our community can scale their business international, so that's the goal. And again, so the, our goal is to grow the community to 10,000 in two years, and it's totally feasible. And uh, if you, if I may ask you to give advice uh, to the uh, women, women the, which are present right now in the audience, uh, how to be successful in startups, uh, what, what what that would be? I mean, how you what, how you can encourage them with with, with what kind of advices? So uh, for those who are uh, considering themselves in that uh, kind of ventures, building the startup, of course, start with understanding. So what does that business mean? Uh, you can read whatever uh, you find interesting. Or check on our info center at uh, taventures.com.ua. So at our website, there's an interesting uh, info center with the books we advise, conferences we advise, online courses we advise, uh, different interesting models which are not yet taken, which can be started from Ukraine, not only for Ukraine, but also for Ukraine only. Um, and um, where these models can become 
European or even global leaders from Ukraine. So if you are planning to do something, the main, the main um, ideas, uh, which are I mean, known to everybody from our industry, that uh, first of all, you have to be professional in what you are doing. Uh, it's not about if you are dreaming to just to uh, quick access, to have a quick access to money, uh, it's totally wrong and doesn't make sense even to start that because totally visible and transparent for all the venture capital community. So first, professional. Mm -hmm. Second, you have to uh, know something uh, which uh, somebody, uh, not somebody, if consumers are ready to pay for this, mm -hmm. something really helpful, really changing the landscape of entrepreneurship, something which helps us to get an access to the services cheaper, quicker, in more transparent way, mm -hmm and facilitating our life, business, or whatever. So important that, that there are customers which are ready to pay for your idea to be implemented. And if you have a team, at least a couple of people, uh, desirable with the complementary skills, so not everybody is doing the same. Now, there should be some, somebody who is leading the venture, somebody who is um, supervising the tech part, Product, product building, somebody you know, focused on marketing, depending on the vertical, of course. But there are a lot of interesting materials, so just start searching, reading them, uh, visiting several conferences where startups present. There are like conferences like Tech uh, TechCrunch Disrupt, they're uh, not only in San Francisco, also in New York and some other uh, destinations where um, every day they change like 400 startups. So three days conference, you can see 1,200 startups. And if you are so smart to be able to talk to a number of them, mm -hmm. so that's a good start, I mean, to understand how do they pitch, what they do and maybe you will find your idea there. By the way, is it good uh, to have a big corporate career for, for starting up your own business? Have you, what is your experience about that? I mean... Uh... It's different, so it can be helpful, it can be harmful, it depends. Actually, it depends. It depends on what? How you, for example, if you meet somebody as a founder with great uh, idea, uh, is it uh, for plus if s this person worked for 10 years in PNG or Mondelez or something? Or, or it's, better, uh, it's better if somebody has a deep experience or expertise in certain industry. We have seen a number of interesting spin-offs from the big corporates, uh, especially in uh, the sector of automo autom automotive mobility. Because the majority of the corporates, unfortunately, are clumsy. It's not that easy to uh, start up your venture there. Not every, not everybody, not all of them. There are some which are more focused on um, growing the talents from the inner side of their organizations, but the majority are still uh, really clumsy and it's not easy to spin off and to start up your business. Uh, so um, those, um, the, the, those talents, uh, they go out from the corporates, from the corporate world, they start their business and they're super successful. So because you have the deep knowledge of something, so you know how to change something in, inside your corporation. But unfortunately the rules and the standards of the corporation uh, do not allow you to do that. So then you go and raise money uh, from angels, from uh, venture capital and start doing. So we have a number of examples from um, uh, the startups which were started from the big corporates. But for example, if I want to be a successful uh, venture capitalist, uh, please tell me what kind of skills and qualities uh, should I have, uh, for example, or should I build long term? If, if you can help me to prepare or to create this long term personal development plan, what skills and qualities should I have for this? No, first of all, you have to be entrepreneur. Uh, you have to have entrepreneurial spirit. Then again, so just to repeat what uh, we discussed earlier, you have to be professional in a specific sector. And then in this specific sector, there should be the demand to build and to start new venture. That's uh, important. Uh, ideas are in the air. There are a lot of ideas everywhere. So you can pick any and uh, start up your business. That's not that difficult. The most uh, difficult part is the operational part, to start and to do it, but actually to build the startup. Because, I mean, um, what we see um, uh, playing in a different continents, uh, investing in, a different, uh, in, in the same verticals in a different continents, in Europe, in US, in Latin America, in Asia, we see that um, uh, th th they're the same models everywhere. The majority of the same models can be 
uh, implemented successfully in the different continents. So whatever is empty in our region, in, um, also in Ukraine only, there are a number of models which can be successful, multi-million uh, in revenues, 10, 20, up to 100 million in revenue models uh, in Ukraine, but also can be European or regional leaders, or even to scale internationally. We have also from Ukraine a couple of examples, uh, but they are of course more techy companies. Uh, it's not about offline or e-commerce, it's um, more about country specific, etc. But still, there are a lot of opportunities. Uh, the idea you can get from everywhere, from open sources, from TechCrunch, from visiting these conferences, uh, from your expertise and uh, from the corporates where you've been working uh, in, the most difficult part is to bring it to success. I mean, to build an operational team, uh, to make it happen. So that's exactly the qualities which we, are, as a venture capitalist, we are analyzed the most, especially in the seed and early stage. So the most important part of the due diligence for us is the personal due diligence. So the due diligence of the founders, founding team, and C-level management. Wow. And how, how, how we do this? For example, what kind of question, tell us your secret sauce. What kind of question you are asking on, on the interview with founders? Like top three or five questions. Yeah, I will, so there are a lot of interesting, um, um, interesting qu uh, qu questionnaires on that, how to do the personal due diligence in uh, internet, so whatever you can pick and uh, check. So, but just uh, explaining um, on my historicals, so uh, first couple of years, uh, we used to invest uh, in the companies uh, where I have not met with the founders personally. And, uh, uh, and we had some issues, some problems. We lost a couple of companies uh, because of that. That was the reason, because when I met the founders after, so I knew already that we are at risk. So, and after that, so we stopped this practice. Uh, we stopped to rely on the um, um, opinion of our friends, entrepreneurs, friends, investors, or lead investors, we do our te uh, personal due diligence ourselves, always. So how does it look like? So you go, so first you do all the technical due diligence, you analyze the financials, uh, budget, you have several calls um, uh, with the found founders, with the founding team, etc. You get all the materials, you do your homework, the, the bunch of different questions and on due diligence, that's what exactly what we do. We analyze the competition, uh, geographical issues, who is on the market, uh, who are lead investors. But what do you need to know about me to yes, define? Yes, yes, just, I... let me explain so step by step. So first we do this. Mm -hmm. And the last last part, and the most important, is the personal due diligence. So whenever the company is, so I'm going there directly myself, personally, or my partners, we meet the people in US, in Europe, in Canada, in Asia, in Israel, doesn't matter where, but personal, we go in there. It takes usually one to two days. So we work in the company. We have a bunch of interviews with the whole founding teams, with the C-level management teams, um, or randomly with the people who are working in a tech team, and also with those who are just working in a team. So, and then you understand, so who is doing what? Who is dependent on who? So how they behave in the, in the team? Who is uh, autocratic or the, um, uh, founder? Um, I mean, you see all these uh, moments when you start talking and speaking and making these interviews. And then you end up with understanding, so whether you're in or out. So uh, at this final stage, the most important stage of personal due diligence, so actually about one third of the companies um, get out from our list. That, that's so one third. So um, before, so we said yes to this company, before the last stage, and at the last stage, we lose one third of the companies uh, we consider to invest. So um, you can understand how important it is to do the personal due diligence, because it's again, in the, in, especially in the seed stage, and later on, so it's all about the people. So the but people what kind of dark, dark side of my personality should I demonstrate in order to uh, block uh, your willingness to invest uh, in my so business. So we will dig to your dark side. Don't worry. So that that's uh, that's how we do it. So that's um, that's why we are specialists on this. And then the majority of the seed and early stage uh, funds and um, uh, investors uh, do specialize on psychology uh, as well. So because we have to understand all these moments of um, uh, team building. So how the team works together, founders, etc. But there are some um, simple rules. So for example 
example, we don't go when it's a husband and wife. We don't go when wow. it's so uh, no family business no at all. No family businesses for us. But no, why? No. It's because the stats is like that. I mean, the majority of cases in the state, the uh, <laughs> woman and wife does work. Then brothers and sisters doesn't work. Brothers and brothers, sisters and sisters. The best, the best way for us is friends with the five plus years of experience uh, of friendship, uh, which know each other since school. Uh, university has said, or, or have been working together. So that's the best. Because of trust. Because uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know why others do not work, but um, we have one issue um, in our portfolio um, landscape. Having invested in in uh, in a couple, also uh, boyfriend and girlfriend. Uh, we have another successful example, but these are really people on the high end of understanding how the business logic should work. So they separated, but we have still we do still have a good working business. And that's you have to understand. So at the, at the very beginning, so before you do investments in the company. And there are a lot of interesting tricks on how you understand who is doing what, if somebody is looking for the job, uh, pitching uh, venture capital and that we are together and uh, it's like 10 years prison, we're happy to take this with prison. Then you get all your network of uh, HRs, uh, international HR teams, and you check whether somebody uh, from the company have ever pitched uh, to HR company that they are open, they are ready to change the job, etc. And you start to dig deeper. So what, what's going on, especially uh, in, uh, in making due diligence on the C-level management and the founding team. That's important. Is it uh, is it necessary for the I mean, if somebody wants to get investment from uh, TA Ventures, uh, to have a previous experience in startups, maybe have some failures, or uh, or you prefer to invest uh, in somebody f with fresh uh, experience without any kind of uh, previous experience in startup business? What is your preference? And it's not about my preference. So again, the stats for venture capital investments are there so we understand that the, for us for example it's better to have a failure in a startup than a zero startup so just to compare to us because the people with the failures the, there are le lessons learned and we have a couple of investments like that in our portfolio also we lost the company and then investment uh, invested again two times in the um, uh, in entrepreneurs which uh, lost the business and from our portfolio we have these examples as well uh, it's better is better for us, but we are not limited to this. So um, it all depends on the people. Of course, there are fresh startup, startup, startuppers, uh, which pitch to us and they get financing. There are those who did already the successful venture. They're the best choice. So if somebody has built something uh, to date, and uh, the, the second venture is much better than zero, right? But um, again, so it just practices, mm -hmm. but you should not be limited to, because there are a lot of smart in, um, entrepreneurs, uh, first-time entrepreneurs, and we are happy to support them. You mentioned uh, that for good founder, it's quite important to have, first, an entrepreneurial mindset. Second, you mentioned professionalism, but is it uh, necessary to, to be leader? I mean, or you can be just like a botanic uh, mindset and just no, that no, no, would be no. enough. It's 100% important. Do, so do you believe in introvert leaders? No. No, I mean, uh, all our, all our, I mean founders. Uh, all our founders like crazy leaders, I mean, great. I mean, really leading the businesses and uh, being able to support, to die for their businesses, I mean, really a bit crazy, passionate people. So that's, the, again, this is the part of our diligence which we are doing. So we, we don't see these uh, crazy eyes that there is no chance uh, for us, no yeah. chance. You have to really, be, truly believe in what, we are, what you are doing and what you are pitching and what you are building. Because this is not that easy to build a startup, so startup founders should understand that it's 10 years minimum, and they have to, they, they should not um, wait for a lucky opportunity to exit in one year to raise money and exit. Uh, then then uh, great things happen, right? But um, in the majority of the cases, it's a long way. It's a long way, and everybody who is considering themselves in the startup business should um, dedicate 10 years of their life uh, building, working, and no sleep, and really it's 24-7, 365. So that's important to understand. It's not an easy job. And based on that, what is the best age to start your own business? Based on this statistics, definitely, you mentioned it a lot. 
I mean, uh, usually the younger people are less risk averse, so they, they can really jump into uh, the crazy uh, work, uh, hard work, working, etc., etc. What do you mean young? Because young, twenties <laughs> after university. So ah, I would okay. say the majority of the challenge, challenges and those who start their start after universities. But uh, in our portfolio, there are a bunch of uh, successful startups uh, started by uh, the founders after forty. So different stats on this after forty. Um, we have also the um, a couple of startups, to be precise, too, started by the founders at 50 plus. One is 58 years old, and it's super successful, super successful. So it's um, no matter when you start, but you have to be ready to work hard because startup, startup to build the startup, to lead the startup, <laughs> it's a really super hard job. And let's imagine that I have a brilliant idea. I, I even have uh, some kind of several good friends from school and uh, and kindergarten <laughs> yes like from kindergarten and yeah. mvp uh, so how should i uh, present my product to you i mean what would be important i mean uh, to, to 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 find out in my product f for you to invest in me and my team you have to have uh, first of all the model which is interesting for the startup uh, you have to be the scalable geographies, the geography which might be interesting for this model to be implemented. You have to have the great team, again, professional team, which can prove us that you are professionals in what you are building. Mm -hmm. So you have the, on your back uh, the experience in these and these businesses or industries, etc. So uh, it's not that you decided to build something uh, working in a totally different um, uh, business, corporate, or whatever, it doesn't work usually. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to understand that you can do it. So um, at the early, at the early, um, early stages of um, TA Ventures, so, uh, sometimes the team was thinking that somebody could do this because you can do this. So for example, I'm from offline business and I have my um, big chunk of the life spent in offline. And uh, sometimes when uh, there is somebody uh, smart pitching you something, that you, oh yeah, there's a great idea, so you, uh, they can do it. But it's not they can do it, it's you can do it. So you um, extrapolate the, the model to yourself. So you can do it, it doesn't mean that they can do it. And it's important to really uh, separate so uh, your experience, what you can do, from the experience of young entrepreneurs mm -hmm. uh, and what they can do. So that um, really uh, comes with the experience, uh, especially when you want to be successful in venture investments. Before I will ask uh, the audience to prepare the question. I want to ask uh, one uh, uh, question to you about the decision-making process in your found, found. How it looks like? I mean, what kind of, what stages do you have? How many uh, experts and person involved in each stage? I mean, how, what's the time frame of your usual uh, decision about investment? Yeah, it all depends, because in the early stage sometimes you have enough time, like a couple of months. Uh, sometimes you have to decide within one week. Uh, there are also some hard deals where we have to take a decision within days. So it it's all depends on the opportunity. But usually there's an investment committee uh, in, in the fund, and we have like four partners now. And uh, it's, um, so uh, we vote 100%. So everybody should support the venture. There are a lot of interesting startups. And uh, I don't need to um, just, uh, so for me it's important to have 100% everybody supporting the venture. So that's how did it work. Uh, before and hopefully it will work uh, like that in the future mm, it's important for us so everybody is supporting this uh, this investment mm -hmm. uh, so in ter terms of timing I told you and uh, we have 15 percent uh, or 15 people in um, 15 people in our in our team 10 10 people on investment investment team uh, analysts which are working not only in Ukraine but also in uh, Europe and US and um, same with partners. We have partner in Europe, in uh, Germany, and in in US. And it helps us to diversify and to be present in those geographies where we investing. So it's most like seventy percent Europe and thirty percent US. Mm, that's our split off. And uh, our partners support us to cover those geographies, partners and analysts. Uh, so a part of this, uh, we've built since 2010 the huge network of co-investors. It's more than 600 co-investors. 
customers. Oh. It's angels, uh, family offices, uh, seed and early stage funds, private equity funds, and many, many other players of investment um, community um, globally. Uh, just um, naming a few of them. So, for example, te top 10 European um, funds are co investors across my 136 companies invested. And um, out of top 10 US funds, nine, except Sequoia, maybe soon, mm -hmm. um, they are co-investors um, across uh, those ventures we invested. So um, uh, our, we have a huge network. We can really help startups uh, to raise money, and we know how to do it. And that's our super added value for the seed and early stage startups. So oh, that's impressive. how it works. Is there any questions in the audience? Yes. We see one hand raised. Vladimir Bogatsky. Uh, Victoria, you spoke about the research that states that uh, women-led organizations are performing better than uh, men-led organizations. Does it say anything about mixed teams? Because my assumption would be mixed teams provide better mix of roles. It's easier to get complementary team. And if not, what's your view on that? No, uh, thank you for the question. So it's, it was exactly about mixed team. So mixed team, there you, have, you should have uh, one, two, or three women uh, in the management, and together with the men, that's the best. I mean, to have the mixed team uh, is the best you can imagine because that, that's the balance. That's all about the balance. That work best. I mean, uh, female founders work well, male founders work well, but when it's a mix, you can mitigate a lot of risks having the mixed teams. Thank you. Is there any questions? Yes, please. Uh, Julia Delinska, um, entrepreneur, and I want to ask you uh, about professionalism. You said you uh, measure uh, how professional uh, founder and team, but how can I be uh, sure I am professional enough if I come to you for startups? Because I have startup and this not successful business, so I'm not sure, can't, can't be sure that uh, I'm prof professional enough. Thank yeah, you. okay, so uh, maybe a little bit like joke in answer, but uh, when you come to me, you will be sure that you are professional, so 100%, so that's, uh, that's all about it. So, but uh, speaking seriously, then, um, so what, what, what is professionalism? So, for example, if you are building the B2B SaaS project, so you have to have an experience in specific sectors uh, for which you are designing this software, so you have to understand the sector. Otherwise, uh, I will not believe you. Okay, so you should work in the specific sector uh, if you decide to do something. So, for example, if you are building the food tech startup, so for me, it will be much better to, if you will have experience in the food industry or in the commerce or in uh, logistics, etc. So, whatever is connected with the food tech. Okay, so th th that's what I mean with the professionalism. It's not about so your education, so what exact majors you have, uh, which uh, institutions you graduated, it's not about this, about your work experience should be connected directly with the business model you are building within your startup. Is there any more questions? Yes, please. Good evening, uh, Victoria. I would like to ask you a question. You have a, uh, you do a great job, but you're quite modest in publicity. So, um, if you could tell us what is your most successful projects, maybe a couple of them, you are especially proud of, and what were the success fact factors that lead to that, please? Just Thank a couple you. of examples. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course. So, uh, how can you tell that one baby is better than another? Yeah. So that's. The same with me, so I have 136 investments. You can check all of them at Crunchbase, so they're all listed there. And with the 46 exits, so out of them uh, starting its failures, so it's bankruptcies and write-offs, and the rest are successful exits where we uh, made money. That's exactly what the business is about. So uh, those 33 uh, are those I'm proud of, of course, having exited. I can just name last, uh, last uh, ones recent. So the last exit, uh, which by the way, we have not announced yet, but we will uh, within the next week, it's Indian company. Uh, we made almost 30x there with the company and quite happy with that. So 30, 30 times we made our money. So I'm proud of this. Yeah, then at the previous exit, we sold the company to Alibaba. Baba is data artisan, it's open source um, 
company Techie guys super team from Germany. This was not an easy uh, nut to crack, I would say, but um, it was a successful venture. We supported the company from the very beginning and uh, several others we exited in uh, uh, 2018. So uh, I'm proud of all our ventures and we did a great job with the whole team, uh, internationalizing the experience of the TA ventures, being able to build the successful story from Ukraine. And it, saying that, I would support others. I mean, doesn't matter where are you from. I mean, you can be from Kosovo, you can be from Ukraine, whatever. So if you're smart, if you wanna uh, invest in yourself and. Uh, be better than you are, and you, there are a lot of opportunities to learn now and to build successful cases in whatever industry you choose. Important is to have this desire to do something, be proactively, uh, proactively doing that. And uh, there are a lot of examples to read and to learn and to share. Join the VTech community. It will help the women to build a new wave of um, IT entrepreneurs with the women, women Founder, so. <laughs> but tell us a bit more. The question was also the what the um, factors of success within these uh, uh, projects. Uh, can you mention some of them? Okay, I mean, they, they are the same. So uh, really driven founders, the founders who do love what they are doing, professional founders, hard workers, professional in what they are doing. Uh, of course, there is a bit of luck, right? Because uh, sometimes you can meet the proper uh, investors, which can help you to lead your venture and to the exit and um, raising the several uh, rounds of financing. Uh, that's also, yes, is there. Uh, and uh, I mean, uh, proper business model, um, which is on demand, and there are several interesting trends which are hype now, and it makes sense to consider them. Uh, they are coming and going, because uh, in our business, so uh, it's like five year trends, so the business is there, then in five years, they start the same business models in the different continents, and then the, the uh, window is closed. Then in another five years, then another business models are trendy, then another bunch of interesting startups uh, appear on different continents, and then the window is closing. It's like with e-commerce, with e-commerce, for example, so with the B2C marketplaces. So the window was almost closed. So in the majority of the continent, they have major players, like billion dollar companies, 100 billion dollar companies, so the, the window was closed. Now it's the next, next big thing is automotive mobility, then a lot of things going on in digital health, then another uh, trend will be with the education, a difference or rethinking of the total different approach for, for education. Then MarTech, it's almost closed, but there is still something, um, new models disrupting what Google is doing, what Facebook is doing, so we know that that's another window which will be closed in another couple of years. So it's like um, with the three, five um, year trends, and uh, um, it makes sense to invest in startup uh, startups now, because those all those windows of digitalizing um, the um, economy will be closed in 10, 15 years. So what I understood that you invest mostly in, in, in people, in, in leaders and their teams, not in ideas and products and models. Am I right? Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, co it's complex. It's, um, in, it's model, uh, geography, and people. Yeah. Okay. But if uh, there were a question about the success, can you please uh, tell me about your uh, the most dramatic failure? and uh, the lessons learned from this failure. No, we discussed it, Lourdes. I would say that the, 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 mo the, the, the most, uh, um, one of the biggest failure, right? It was the company which we invested uh, in Germany, Auctionata. The company uh, which was supposed to disrupt the auction business worldwide. So uh, really, so the, the company threatened the Christie's and Sotheby's auction. It was an amazing model. The mistakes were that um, the founder, the founder was purely from offline, uh, with a like really historical uh, fam family story uh, in auctions, uh, in auctions in Germany, and uh, I personally did not meet them. Uh, didn't meet him and uh, uh, another founder, and first time I met, so that's exactly the, the case. I understood that we are going in the wrong, wrong direction. Because um, offline what you, what traditions... You, what, you saw, offline, what you saw in, in the... In the uh, I saw the um, 
great professional uh, with a lot of offline uh, strategies and which, we, which he was not ready to change. Uh, autocratic uh, mode of running the business. Uh, bringing the people which he could control 100%, and that's exactly not the way the startup ecosystem works. Being untransparent, et cetera, et cetera, and all that together, in spite of the fact that company was doing like almost 100 million in revenues wow. in, in several years, the company was bankrupt, it's one of the major failures, and the problem is not only with this guy, but the problem with the, um, the whole uh, um, pool of investors, which were blind, and from the very beginning, that they should have reacted, but they did not. We're focusing on raising, 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 and doing something, and trying to hide the problems. And that's, um, again, another issue for start startup, I guess, but not only, for those who are building businesses and uh, attracting the external financing, it's important to know who you marry, because this is like important like marriage. Because the investors which are pulling your business or be pulling the um, investors together, uh, they, they, you have to really be careful uh, who are you choosing. Mm -hmm. Because a uh, lead investor, investor pool, it's extremely important. So that's, that's the major learnings learned from this business. But, okay, now we're getting, getting clever, getting wiser with every investment we do. That's great. Are there any kind of more questions? Yeah, please, two questions, great. Hi everyone, a uh, quick question. Victoria, excuse me. How do you evaluate uh, startups? <laughs> I mean, it uh, uh, might be too long. <laughs> you can ask Dennis, which is sitting <laughs> behind you. Yeah, it's, it's a long, complex story uh, to evaluate startups. I will answer you like this. So for uh, general due diligence, uh, it takes three days, uh, not three days, three multi multiply 24 hours, it might be more, just to finalize the due diligence. It's a work of the whole 10 people in our investment team. Okay, so it's quite a, quite a uh, long process. And um, uh, the, 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 detail, the details of the process you can again get in online, it's everywhere. I mean, all the books read, um, any, anyone you like, one of the top rated books on Am Amazon on um, uh, the principles of uh, investing in startups. So, but actually, so you have to have smart analysts, we have to have uh, people who understand this business. And that's why um, among our 600 plus co-investors, we have on the one side entrepreneurs, from another side investors. And uh, in case we do not understand the specific verticals where we go, because you cannot understand everything, right? So then what we do, we do like sort of the second layer of investment committee. Um, from one side, we are addressing the, or sending the startup you know, deck and information we gathered to investors uh, being specific to partners in specific funds, friends funds, who are specializing in this specific vertical, so they know this vertical really, really good. And on the other side, we are sending the company to entrepreneurs out of our network who are doing the business with this specific sector. And getting their answers, so yes or no, it forms like, so then we can prove um, yes or no um, from our team. So that's how we balance, how we add on uh, expertise uh, in those uh, verticals where we have not really uh, been an experts. Great, thank you. thank you. And the last question, please. Uh, thank you for the inspiration for us. I just want to ask you, how do you inspire yourself and your employees? Great question. Thank you. I mean, that's, uh, again, all about people. So, of course, uh, we have an amazing team uh, in TA Ventures, in uh, Code Club, in uh, Odessa Film Festival, Code Academy, uh, um, Film Academy, and VTEC. So, um, every company have their traditions. I, I will speak about the traditions of TA Ventures. For example, so we have team buildings, right? And uh, every three months, uh, we know so how many companies we lost. Uh, how many companies uh, we exited, and we have tradition to go to the bar together. We choose it like nice bars. We choose every, every, every time somebody chooses the bar, and uh, everybody uh, need need to drink white or black um, um, uh, long drink. So white is for exit, black is like uh, <laughs> for failure, right? And um, uh, this is the way we communicate, we talk, we discuss, and a little bit uh, on on a um, relaxed mode. 
Um, then we have trips together somewhere. We usually, uh, it's beauty of uh, venture capital, so we're traveling a lot. For example, I'm traveling 50% of my time, so 50% of the year I'm traveling somewhere. And uh, sometimes we go to the same conferences with my uh, teammates, so it's nice, nice opportunity for them to know each other better, to talk, to uh, be not stressed. Okay, and um, this helps also to build the community of iClub. So if, I don't know whether somebody knows we have the, spe the club of investors uh, in certain early stage startups, which opens the opportunity um, for private investors in Ukraine to be able to chip in the smaller tickets, like 10 or 25,000, to invest with the companies uh, we as a TA Venture support. So uh, we show it, um, at, uh, at iClub only the companies we invest as a fund, and they have an opportunity to put the money together with us. Uh, it's about education, first of all, because um, uh, this iClub, it didn't happen just from, from the air. I had a couple of um, sad stories uh, in our network. When the investors invested the startups which should, see, uh, should not see the shed of light, uh, Ukrainian startups, just smart guys, smart girls, talking nicely about bullshit. So, and then they invested, and uh, uh, when they say, okay, I invested in this company, I said, okay, give me the name. And what in my heart was, and so the name was <laughs> one of those names, which when you have to drink the black uh, long drink. Uh, then I decided to make this club just to educate them first of all and to, to give an opportunity to learn about innovations, uh, startup ecosystem, how to be closer and uh, to do less mistakes. Because in our business, uh, there is a lot of science on the back end. So, uh, for example, if you invest in 10 startups, uh, one or two you can lose, and our stat is 10%, so out of 10 we lose one. And every year you get smarter and smarter. So when you play this game, play, play it wisely, investing the same ticket in every startup you like, so like 25 or 50K, whatever, uh, then uh, you can get, like we are getting, like our IRR is 42%, uh, gross IRR, which is quite nice, <laughs> with a net IRR, so on cash on cash, uh, um, and invested and uh, lost, so 25%, uh, which put us really in the five top best performing funds, uh, see the early stage funds, uh, by stats, so uh, just play this game, and why not, and you learn, uh, you mingle with the nice people. Again, it's a club about investments, so why not? Thank you. Thank you, Victoria. My friend uh, has sent me a message a minute ago. I have to ask this question to you uh, on confidentiality basis, basis um, without mentioning name. Do you have any kind of vacancies and how to send uh, CV uh, to your office or to you? <laughs> Uh, it's easy, so you just send it to taventures.com.ua, so we have the special secret uh, inbox, so just send it there. And, uh, but is there any vacancies for investment uh, directors, investment managers, portfolio managers? It can be, because we are in... <laughs> we are in it's quite a team. good talent universe yeah, sitting so here, so... Whoever is interested to become an analyst or for internship during the summer or would like to apply for investment director position or whatever, welcome. So we are expanding all the time. <laughs> so who knows, I mean, maybe we can match each other. Great, thank you. Thank, thank you a lot you. for thank this you. interview. And thank, thank all you. of you that being with us.